happy Monday, everybody. It's yet another magical Monday with Michelle. And even if you're watching this on hashtag replay, give us a shout out. Um, whether you're seeing this, what we do is um, we post this up on YouTube after we're done. So anytime you get these, we can you can always watch them on YouTube. But if you want to watch them live, they're at six o'clock Eastern Standard Time on Facebook in the Soul Circle Facebook group. So if you're watching it on YouTube, you can always join the Facebook group. We're getting ready to do a energy reboot challenge in September. So now would be the time to make sure you're part of that Facebook group because I'm pretty excited about some of the things that we're gonna be doing doing in September. So welcome, welcome to Virgo season. It is the day of transition, which is always interesting. It is August 22nd right now. You may be watching this um, later, but, but we've got all those twos. We have eight, 22, and two, two, two. So we have this energy of completion and energy of wholeness today. And when we move from Leo, Leo is like sort of like that spotlight, that outward thinking. Virgo is very inward thinking. Virgo is very analytical, very um, meticulous. And so a lot of us have made some like energetic choices over the last month or maybe over, over a series of months. There's been some things that we're coming into and we've been thinking about and we've been planning for and we've been and we've had these great spurring of ideas. Virgo season is about actually methodically taking action on those on those thoughts. Um, there's some inward. Sometimes it can be a little critical. Um, so with Virgo, I like to think about how do you rearrange being self-critical into um, making your criticism of self an opportunity to be a change maker. And that can be even if you're not in Virgo season. So, so the way I like to think of it is the saboteur can be overcome with a recognition. It's almost like you name the saboteur. You recognize I'm sabotaging myself or there's this thing that I know I want to do and all I need to do is just actually take action to do it. That's going to bring um that's going to bring you a sense of power. You're going to actually be able to just like move yourself along and slow and steady wins the race. Um there's a lot of it doesn't all have to be done perfectly. So that's that's something to counteract right now is this want to have everything be perfect. Um, it's probably never going to be perfect. Instead, be part of the journey, be part of the process. Allow yourself to unravel the need for perfectionism. One of the books that I love, it was, it was a real book influential book for me about seven, eight years ago is Brene Brown's book, um, Gifts of Imperfection. I love all of her books, but this particular one, as a perfectionist, I mean, my moon is in Virgo, my rising sign is in Virgo. So I'm, I'm a Taurus, but I have two influential signs in Virgo. So, so I'm really wrapped up in, in that want or desire to be perfect. I can't let it out of my hands until it's perfect. Well, I've really, over the last five or six years, had to just be like, it is enough. I am enough. I'm always enough. My best effort is 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 enough. Otherwise, nothing would ever get done because I would be holding on to it. And so let the journey be the joy. Um, I used to... Um, not know how to live in joy, one of the things that changed that is to even let imperfection be part of joy and seeing like, oh, that that slight imperfection makes it unique. That slight imperfection makes it a mark of me. And so, so instead of like going 
this has to be exactly this way. Allow it to come into your own heart and just love yourself a little bit more. Give yourself a little bit more. Get, get to the place where um, loving kindness becomes your superpower. When you start accepting other people exactly where they are and you start accepting yourself exactly where you are, it's going to shift everything on allowing your desires to come in. It actually being being really clear on where you are in the in that self reflection without being overly critical, right? We don't want to be overly critical. We want to just be like, this is where I am and this is where I'm going. You can see how far you've come. And and be careful not to get into the downfall of I thought I would be here by now, but because you still have made a journey. Maybe it's a different journey than you expected, but look at how far you've come. So so I was just, just uh, a lot of memories pop up this time of year, and I realized I just got back from Hawaii a year ago today. Six years ago, um, I was at my friend um, Leanne's in Baltimore, and I realized just how hugely profoundly different we have been in those six years like that version of me and that version of her we have we are we are beautiful flowering um expressions of our womanhood in a way that you know i don't want to say we were girls then but we felt um we were still criticizing ourselves. Both of us were criticizing and we both have come to a huge amount of acceptance in that time frame. And when you can just love yourself right where you are, it's gonna be easier for you to believe that you are the creator. Um, when you recognize that you're a divine creating being, everything's gonna shift. Everything's gonna become a little bit more easy. And so I want you to just like move into your heart today. I want you to get really take a deep breath because I know the energy has been heavy. We've got solar storms coming in right now. And so I've heard people being really, really tired. Well, when you're tired, there is a request from the universe for you to rest. Even if you're like, I have things to do, and I'm not saying uh, use this as an avoidance technique. If there's something you really have to do, do the thing. But if there is something that could wait a few more days or just doesn't need to be done because of that need for perfectionism, take this time. We're in dark moon this week, so take this time to rest. We have a new moon in Virgo on Friday, and it really is late in the day Friday, so most people won't really feel that new moon energy till the weekend, but that's awesome. That means you're going to have a spur of energy on the weekend, at least based on astrology. So this week, it's Monday, maybe you're watching this on Tuesday, um, just kind of see what needs to be done, what loose ends need to be cleaned up, what plans need to be made. And if you want to make a plan for getting something done, do it on the weekend when you've got that energy. You're going to have Virgo for a couple of days, new moon, and then you're gonna move into Libra, which is all about beautifying things. So if you're like wanting to get some projects done around the house, this weekend, that's a great time to do it. If you're wanting to get some work work done, set up a plan, uh, use this week for planning out the next month or so of, of work, use this as a planning week. Use this as, um, as, as, a, as a tying up loose ends week and allow yourself to rest. If your body says rest, allow yourself to rest. The solar stones, could be making you feel like you're dizzy, could be making you feel just tired, could be sleep disturbances. So so come back into your heart and just give yourself an extra layer of love, appreciation, and acceptance. 
And so let's walk you through that a little bit. Go ahead and shake off your shoulders and relax your neck and take a deep breath and just bring yourself into your heart and just exhale all that you're holding on to. Sometimes it is that simple, just realigning your spine. The word I'm gonna use here is alignment. What are you aligning to? Are you gonna to align to a little bit of acceptance, a little bit of ease? What are you gonna to align to? And so I'm aligning to ease. I'm aligning to grace. And so just feel that reset in your body. And imagine dropping down into the grid of the earth. Imagine just anchoring, anchoring yourself. I think of the, the, the spine as a trunk of a tree. Anchor the down through your tailbone, down into the earth, the trunk of your tree. And then um, make sure that you're including your legs as limbs of anchoring, um, like roots of a tree. But make sure that when you're bringing the energy back up, you're bringing them all together at that tailbone. You're bringing the energy up through your legs, back up to your, to your, to your pelvic floor, and bringing it over from your hips and joining there at your root chakra. And then just breathe that energy up. We want to breathe energy all the way to our heart from the center of the earth. So feel that heartbeat of the earth. Feel yourself aligning to it. Feel yourself lining up into your nervous system. This is going to help you reset your nervous system in the highest and best way. And just allow yourself to breathe. Allow every breath out to be an exhale of any extra stress, any extra um, energy that you're holding on to. And allow the breath in to be breathing from the earth up to your heart. And it just starts opening up your heart, opens up your chest, opens up the back of your neck and shoulders. Now, imagine you're bringing the energy from the sun down. Bring it in through your hands, bring it in through your crown, bring it in through your third eye, washing over all your overthinking, washing away that brain matter of overthinking, bringing it in through your neck, across your shoulders, the weight of the world off of your, off of your shoulders, and bringing that down into your arms, into your arms, into your heart, into your mind's eye, into your heart. Just imagine all the way to the heart, all of that washing away, clearing and removing stress and negativity. So wash that off all the way down and out into the earth. And so you're bringing the earth's energy up to your heart and the sun's energy down to your heart and they're gonna meet. And imagine they're making a beautiful splash of light as they meet and go down, bring the bring the energy down and bring the energy up until you're a unified force. Just imagine it like DNA strands, these two energies twisting, one energy going up, one energy going down, and then bring that energy to the edge of your field, all the way to your fingertips, all the way out around you. And you're creating a field of light, a torrential field. And bring that field of light to your third eye. Bring it up through the base of your spine, through your chakras, to your third eye. Breathe it there. Resetting your pineal gland, resetting your mind's eye. And just imagine it showering out, expanding your heart, expanding your heart brain coherence and sending out love into the planet. Send out love to everyone you can think about right now. We're gonna send it out. Send it to your loved ones actually name them send it to your enemies someone you've been annoyed with or or have felt dissonance with send them acceptance in this moment send them love send the thing that you've been thinking about in the politics or in in the planet let's send it out into the um it's 
voting day in a lot of places tomorrow. So send it into the field, send it into seeing peace on earth and, and good resolution on earth. Send out acceptance with the aligned action of love. So then breathe it back in. Imagine that the entire world, every single person on this planet is loving and accepting you and that you are loving and accepting you, that you are in a place of pure peace, that you are in a place of pure acceptance. Feel the wave of acceptance being in your receiving field. Feel it come in through your hands, into your heart, in through your legs, into your heart. Breathe in love and acceptance. Breathe in radical understanding of your already perfect imperfections. Breathe into understanding you're a divine being in this moment, in this generous present, and that everything is going to be okay and you are safe and then send it out in the change agent of not only is it going to be okay but it's going to be better than it's ever been and move into that energy of gratitude of i'm so grateful i'm so thankful that this is already in my life now and just feel the wave of i'm so grateful and thankful going out and the wave of i receive all that i think all that I need, all that I desire in the highest and best way. Feel that coming into your field. And just remember that slow and steady wins the race and that acceptance of self is going to do that and just accept where you are and just take one divine step. So see yourself making one divine step this week, one divine step this day, one design, divine step this month, and all of a sudden you're at the end of the race. You have gotten everything you've ever desired because you just held the field of love and acceptance and knowledge that you are already perfect in your imperfection. You are already perfect in your energy of acceptance and love in the now, right now. And the right now is all that matters as we're creating the future. And just feel that wave of peace and knowledge and acceptance come all the way through you in the highest and best way. And just sit in that and just feel it explode through you and allow yourself to be in that energy of love And remember that I love you. Remember to live, live every day as a magical moment. Magic's in the details. And what is magic? It's where the little things bring joy, spark joy into your life. And when you're in that energy of acceptance, it's easier, more joyful, more, more pleasant. And so if you want to go deeper, take, take this practice into a daily practice. If there's any, any way you, you want to see that, see it in, a, in the field as already done. And I'm so grateful for you. And I hope you have a wonderful week. Know that this week is a great week for manifesting. If you want to sign up for the trip to Egypt or to Witchy Weekend, I only have one, maybe two spots um, left for Witchy Weekend. We're, we're, we're at that point where uh, it sells out every year. Um, I do have one or two more rooms um, available um, for Halloween weekend in New Smyrna Beach. It's going to be gorgeous. I started working on the menu this week. It's it's a beautiful bed and breakfast. It is 
rituals on the beach. We've got two rituals this year on the beach. Um, we've got a uh, bonfire as always. And this year we've added a reflexology treatment. So there's, there's, it's juicy, it's good. It's um, literally my favorite weekend of the whole year. It's Halloween weekend and um, it's just, it's just absolutely extravagant and, and just super good fun. And then um, we're getting everything aligned for our winter solstice trip to Egypt. And um, I am, I did two more interviews last night. Um, looks like it's a good fit. So we're, so we're looking for about, I think I have four more slots available and um, then we'll be full. So if that's something you've been thinking about, you wanna know how, can, how you can do it, we do have a payment plan. We do have, um, we do have a trip to the Egyptian oil uh, place to see Gamal, to actually touch, smell, and taste and buy your own pure Egyptian oils. We are going to, if you're talking shopping, we're going to be at the papyrus store where they actually will show you how they make papyrus and there's beautiful art. There's um, a trip to the alabaster store so you can get your alabaster statues like my Isis statue and my Sekhmet statue are alabaster from Lust Luxor. Um, so all of these things are on the trip as well as temples and the bazaar and the spice market. Um, we are going to all of these places as well as seven days on the Nile all accumulating with the the most sacred Karnak having its its alignment and it and and I say that today because today is the 22nd of August and it is going to be on the 22nd of December on that winter solstice when the sun rises through that temple through the columns to hit the holy of holies on that day we will be there to see it so if that just gives you goosebumps, if you want. Um, I'm also, I'll announce the timing uh, this week, but I'm going to do next week, I'm going to do an actual um, Zoom call um, where if you have, if you wanna ask me questions about my trip to Egypt that I just came back from, or if you wanna ask about questions about the trip that we're going on, um, I'm gonna have a Zoom call. It's probably gonna be next Thursday Thursday night and um, so a week from this Thursday uh, the first I think it's the first is the day um, we're gonna do a zoom call where you can hop on so if that's something you want private message me and we can get you the zoom link and because um, I'll be telling some stories about my trip so even if you just want to hear my stories go ahead and message me and we'll get you on the list for that Otherwise, have yourself a magical week, a beautiful, fantastic Virgo new moon. Rest if you need to rest. Get, get planning because that's what Virgo energy does. And um, just remember this is a great weekend for manifesting because our, it's gonna be before, before Mercury goes retrograde in two weeks. So this is a good time to like get your manifesting orders in before we go into Mercury retrograde. So I love you. Have a beautiful week and I'll see you again next, uh, next, uh, next Monday.